Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Dunbar Snack Bar, and I'm going to be playing a game of MLB 2K10 for you. I will be playing as the Chicago Cubs, and I will be going up against the World Series champions, the San Francisco Giants, and this guy, Tim Lincecum. Anytime you go up against Lincecum, you know you're going to have a hard day ahead of you. I will have Brian Dempster on the mound for me, who I think has a good balance of power and accuracy. So Ryan Dempster was my choice going into this game here. And I'll kind of go into Dempster a little bit here. But what I'm doing with the Cubs is I'm trying to figure out what team I want to be for MLB 2K11. I decided I'm going to go National League. For those of you who watched my commentary earlier, I thought that I was leaning towards the Oakland Athletics. I think I will, though, for my player mode. But for franchise, I'm definitely going as a National League team, actually. So I'm testing around to see what teams I want to be. And Cubs were up there on my list uh, for a lot of reasons here. One, because Wrigley Field, it's got a lot of history behind it. It's a beautiful park. So to be able to play half my games here will be pretty cool. But here comes uh, Ryan Dempster here with the two-seam fastball. A nice pitch that strikes him out. That was awesome. That was good pitch placement too because the way that that ball broke ended up right on the edge of the strike zone. So I might have actually had caught him swinging too. Yeah, was definitely an option here. Another thing about the Cubs, and this is kind of interesting here, is the Billy Goat Curse. I don't know how many baseball fans are out there. If you know what the Billy Goat Curse is, awesome. You're a friend of my book. If those of you who don't, that's okay. Just look it up on Wikipedia. Billy Goat Curse is something I definitely would love to break and be able to get the Chicago Cubs to the World Series. And not only that, but win it. I think that would be absolutely huge. So that's another big draw for the Cubs for me here as well. Dempster's going to be throwing a fastball here. Low and outside. Catches him swinging. 93 miles an hour. Not too bad. But great start by Dempster so far. Yes, I know it's only the top half of the first, but when you start off the game with a strikeout and you end the half of the inning with a strikeout, you know you're doing pretty good. Dempster is actually not the type of pitcher that I usually like to have. I love pitchers that have huge breaking balls. Going back to you know my past commentaries here, you've seen what I can do with a 12-6 curve, which is my favorite pitch. So with that being absent from the pitching selection, I'm having to mix things up here a little bit going with some different speeds trying to utilize what breaking balls I do have to try and mix them up two seam fastball something that I've definitely been going with here and you'll see on this one catches him swinging once again but this one starts off in the strike zone and it drifts inside and he swung really late on that one too so hey I'll take that however I can so Ryan Dempster up again. This time not so good, though, because I have a man on second. Castro, that was a bad dive on my part. Bird is going to try and throw it home, but definitely not in time. The Giants score first. I am down one to nothing. That is crazy. So definitely mix up to what I typically do. I'm usually not down this early, but good job by the Giants for getting that hit and taking advantage of an opportunity. I'm going to do the same thing, though. Here comes Fukudome at the plate, who's going to hit this one in the right center, and he's going to score my guy from home. So Fukudome with a good hit. Fukudome is actually the man. He's probably my favorite guy on the Chicago Cubs team. Uh, one, because of his hitting rating. Uh, I like a guy who doesn't have a lot of power, and you'll probably see why here later on in the video. But Fukudome is my man for another reason, too. I love his speed. I'm a guy who appreciates the value of speed and what it can do as Fukudome here breaks for second. Swing and a miss, but Fukudome gets in second. The thing about speed that's really nice is, of course, stealing bases, which creates a lot of opportunities to score. You might have not have had earlier, but in this event, I didn't get a score with Fukudome as they did a good job getting out of the situation here and getting me out. But we're back to Dempster here, who throws an awesome slider that breaks into the strike zone. He swings and misses here. This one, we're going to be going with another ah, nice, good slider once again. Same spot. He's not going to be swinging at that. Let's see if uh, he'll go with another slider. Three sliders in a row, but catch him swinging. Again, drifting out of the strike zone, but this time inside. And here we go with Alfonso Soriano. Who do I got on first? My man, Bukadome. Here we go with that lead. Look at him creeping towards second. 
Oh, I'm surprised he has not tried to pick me off, but here he goes. Once again, he's going to go for the dive, or the slide, sorry, and he's safe. So nice job by Fukudome there. Two stolen bases so far in the game. That is awesome. Let's go with this pitch here. Fukudome is going to be going for third on a hit and run. It works out. Fukudome is going to score. That is beautiful. And see, that's what I mean. Had he been on first, who knows if he would have scored. Fist pump there as he makes it in the second barely for the double. I got a little cocky on it, but it was a risk I took that ended up paying off in the end, so classic fist pump. There goes Fukudome. He could have walked in a home on that one. So way to go. Two stolen bases for Fukudome already. Now, I got a new pitcher in here because I guess Lincecum was getting kind of tired, but look at this guy's windup. Look how long it takes. DeWitt is going to steal second, and DeWitt's only got a speed rating of 75. So DeWitt is not the type of guy you typically want to you know, have steal a base here. Casilla, though, has got such a long windup. In fact, I'm going to get super cocky. See DeWitt creeping the, towards home? Here he goes. He's going to be stealing home, going to try and do the suicide squeeze, but he's going to make it safe. That was awesome. DeWitt, you deserve to celebrate on that one. Reminiscent of the Sandlot instead of the Jets steals home, DeWitt steals home. That was awesome. You don't see that too much in this game. So for me to steal home, that's awesome. Here I got Ramirez, though, up at the plate. Big right-hander for me here. He's going to be swinging at a pitch. He should not swing at, but this one's going to be going yard over the ivy, out of the ballpark, into the street. Ramirez increases my lead for me. I'm starting to feel a lot more comfortable here. So nice job, Ramirez. I don't know what I would do if I was the manager and one of my guys hit that kind of pitch because when you take a look at it in one of these shots here, you're going to see how high and outside it was. A fool would swing at that, but I'll take the home run anyway. It would be kind of hard how you'd uh, talk to him about that one because on the one hand, you have to be like, good job. On the second hand, you'd be like, don't ever swing at that again. But right where the sweet spot of the bat is. And any time you get it at the sweet spot of the bat, that's definitely going to carry the ball 412 feet. So nice hit by Ramirez. But here we go. The Giants have got guys on first and second. Here we go, Dempster. But this one is going to be going again over the Ivy, this time in left field. And this is where you would hear the fans chant, throw it back. And I kind of wish they had an animation for it too because that's what I was thinking as Burrell ties up the game at four. The game is tied. And I know I said that earlier out of excitement. This time I say it out of frustration. But it's a whole new ball game. So nice job by Burrell there. They're starting to figure out Dempster, and I've definitely seen that. And you probably have too if you've noticed I haven't had a strikeout highlight of Dempster for some time. So... I don't know how long Dempster is going to be staying in the game here, especially with it all tied up. Here's my man, Bukadome. You know what's coming up. And like I was talking about, I like his hitting. I like that his contact and power is relatively low. Here's why. I'll show you right here. Because Fukudome on this offering hits it in the left field. And look where it drops. I love that. I'd rather take a guy that had these kind of ratings who could get hits like that rather than guys that can hit home runs. But Fukudome is going to be stealing easily in the second. Definitely I'm going to see Fukudome speed here because that's three. Here comes four. Four stolen bases in the game for Fukudome. That is beautiful. I got six total stolen bases. And with Alfonso Soriano here, swing and miss on what would be strike three. It's a wild pitch that scores Fukudome. Didn't get a chance to try and steal home. I don't know if I'll be able to make it again, though. The stealing it once is crazy. But one Soriano shouldn't have swung at, but I'm glad he did. But because it was a wild pitch and a drop third strike, Soriano's on first. Soriano's got enough speed. I think you know what I'm going to be doing. As long as this guy's in the game and he's got that ridiculously long windup, I'm totally taking advantage of it. Is it cheating? I don't know. That's up to you to decide. But here's Soriano with a suicide lead. Going to be going for second. Head first. Makes it. Doesn't even give it a real attempt to try and get me. It's a nice job by Soriano. Stealing third. That's two for Soriano. That's eight steals for the game. Eight 
steals. That is crazy. I'm going to try and go home. Soriano makes it again. That is awesome. Two stolen bases that end up being runs because I stole home. Look at Soriano here. Dive head first. Make it. No problem at all. Yeah, I would sub my pitcher too. So I got a whole new pitcher that I'm going up against, and I'm sitting down Dempster too, though, when I get my chance because Dempster, like I said, having a hard time. So we're going to be going with Kashner here, another right-hander that's pretty similar to Dempster, but he's got a lot more by way of uh, breaking ball, so I thought I'd go with him and the high socks. I think high socks are awesome. <laughs> no, nah, that's not really why I went with him. We've got Corey, Corey Ross up to the plate. It's now 6-4. to four. I am in the lead because of that stolen base by Soriano. His composure is already horrible just because I got a man on first and third. So the tie or the runner to give them the lead is up at the plate. I'd be worried too if I was in this position. I'm not going to lie. But not doing too bad so far. It's really hard to aim the pitch. So I'm hoping I can get it in a good area. But here I'm going to go with the power curve. I'm going to start it high, drop it in the strike zone, and it works. Catches him swinging. One out though. So I'm kind of in a pickle here because I don't want them to get any runs whatsoever. And with Edgar Renteria up at the plate, I'm definitely worried. So let's see what Kashner can do here. <sighs> Red, Edgar Renteria with the hit out to Soriano, who's not going to have any chance of throwing the guy out at home. It is now 6-5. to five. But on this one here, Ramirez has an awesome toss to get me out of the inning. I still have the lead, though, and that's what matters. I'm going to be bringing in my closer. Here is the top of the ninth. A lot of pressure. It's pretty tense. And to be honest, I'm pretty nervous. So let's see what Marmol can do for me here uh, for my closer, giving him an opportunity to get the save, which has been pretty rare. There's not too many save opportunities. It usually goes one way or the other. Either I'm losing by a lot or they're losing by a lot. So definitely a tense game. Let's see what Marmol can do. One of the things about Marmol that made me even more nervous was First look at his pitch selection. Comes. He only has two. A fastball, which you saw right there, that's 96 miles an hour, and a slider. So I don't have too many chances to mix things up because they're looking for one of two pitches. There's a 50% chance they're going to get it right, and I don't like those odds. Not surprised that they got a base hit right there, putting a man in first with no outs. I am worried. I don't like that feel a lot more comfortable if there's a man on first with two outs. It's Let's Freddy see what Freddie Sanchez. Sanchez can do though as he goes up against Marmol right here too. I'm gonna be first trying to definitely go for the cold areas. Those Marmol's spots in blue where they have a harder time hitting the ball. Right Going with the 0-1 count here, here the pitch, another Sanchez fastball, 97 miles an hour, so Marmol right definitely two. has power, but that's just not my pitch. thing. Here he goes again, gets a hold of it. Fukudome, though, he's going to be able to get there pretty quick and hold him at second with an awesome toss to third. A real tough pitch That's another right point there, for Fukudome there. I think Fukudome, if I did go with franchise with mode, would easily, easily win MVP. We'll see, though. See if I go with the Cubs first. So, Aubrey Huff All right, is Aubrey Huff. He's got a shot here with Aubrey Huff's gone one for four, so I'm not necessarily too worried. And a lot of his spots there are blue. Are Composure, though, not that great. Slider that was able to drift in, though, from the outside into the strike zone. That's nice. And a great ball placement there. Composure, see it? It's still jumping around, but it doesn't matter. I get him swinging on that fastball. Can't hit that 97 mile an hour fastball. So I got guys on first and second now with one out. All right, Buster Posey, their catcher now up to bat. He's got a very, very low average. So here's hoping something interesting is going to happen. I'm going to go with a slider right here. Oh, I'm sorry, a fastball. Takes a look at that for strike one. Here we go. Fastball for strike two. Awesome placement. That was barely made it in the corner. Let's see how I do with this one here. I think I'm going with another fastball. To Nady. To Castro. Back to my pitcher. Double play. I win. That was awesome. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for taking a look here at MLB 2K10 with me, Dunbar Snack Bar. Please subscribe. You guys have a good one.